Hey everyone, this is Neil once again from the Overclocker magazine. So here it is, the Intel Arc A750 limited edition GPU review. So I gave you a little preview last week, just the general overview of what this GPU is. So this is just my full-on experience with what I've been using for the last three weeks or so. And I actually made it a point to just not use this on the text rig, but actually use it in my main gaming rig so that I could give you an actual experience on what you should be expecting should you so choose to buy this graphics card or if you are even considering it. So there are things that are great about it. There are things that are not so great about it. There are things that can be sorted with software and will be sorted with software. There are things that I just hardware limitations that will never be solved with software so between all of that i'm hoping that you can make an informed decision as to whether this is worthwhile for you or if it isn't now keep in mind this is a 229 dollar gpu or 5999 at woodware locally it's surprising or rather alarming that intel is able to make a profit on a graphics card that's this well presented that's this well designed it just feels like a premium product and I just don't know how they're able to pull it off at this price. So let's talk briefly about the GPU. It has 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth and that's courtesy of 16 gigabits per second memory chips, right? I think that GDDR, in fact, not I think, they are GDDR6 memory chips. So it has 16 gigabits per second memory chips and obviously all of this is for 8 gigabytes of memory on a 256 bit bus now again at this price point you're not going to find a gpu that has this much memory bandwidth it's just not going to happen i mean the closest competitor to this gpu which is not the direct competitor but closest to it is the rtx 3060 12 gigabyte and that has a 192 bit bus now this should translate into a direct performance advantage for this gpu right when it comes to the actual synthetic tests and i'm talking 3d mark and super position the a750 is vastly superior to the rtx 3060 and mind you i'm talking about the rtx 3060 8 gigabyte the 128 bit one when it comes to the gaming tests the RTX 3060 wins three out of the six benchmarks I ran. It ties in one and loses on the other two. So to me, that says, in as far as the raw computational power is concerned, the A750 is capable. It's better than the 3080 8 gigabyte. But in as far as software optimizations, Nvidia is ahead of where Intel is. And I think uh, AMD as well, because these two vendors have vast libraries and relationships with publishers and developers that they can pull from to make sure that their games are as compatible or as performant as they should be, even with unoptimized drivers. And I don't think Intel is there yet. They will get there in future, but they just simply do not have the relationships that the other two competitors have with game developers in as far as their GPUs are concerned. Therefore, you should expect this sort of thing. So which ties into another thing you should be aware of if you buy this GPU. You may come across a particular crash or something like that that is just weird and you don't know what to do about it. If you were using an NVIDIA graphics card or an AMD one, you would just simply Google it. And chances are there's somebody else who has a similar problem or something that you can gain from somebody else going through a problem that you think is similar to the one you are having. You don't have that luxury here. Why? Because there are a number of people, the amount of users in the Intel graphics ecosystem is much smaller than the other two, meaning that it is quite possible for you to experience something where you are the first one to have that experience, or at least you are the first one to articulate it online. So just be aware of that, that there are issues where a game may not even launch or it may crash. You will turn to your search engine and find that, oh, there's actually no direct answer in how to deal with it. And I was in that situation on one rig. But I will say, for their first merry-go-round, I think they've done such a stellar job, you know. And I think you've even seen this with the updated drivers because last year, Intel did a huge amount of work in bringing up that DirectX 9 uh, performance where apparently they boosted performance up to 43%. And there have been reviews that have tested this and found that this is largely true. However, I don't play DirectX 9 games, right? So that is not necessarily relevant here. But what I will tell you is that I had incompatibility with one game, but on the other game, it was just slightly underwhelming performance. And the rest of the time, it was just acceptable performance. 
one particular game that played very well for me was uh, Miles Morales. I had ray tracing on, um, I think at the highest level actually, or close to the highest level. And I had everything else on the maximum detail and just the smoothness and just how well the game looked with XCSS, of course. I was really impressed. And I think that's one of the games with Hitman as well, Hitman 3, that impressed upon me the power of XESS. Not only is the power, but it's necessity as well, especially if you're going to use ray tracing. So because I've spoken about ray tracing, I want to make you aware of one thing as well when it comes to the GPU. Yes, XESS is visually, in terms of visual fidelity, superior to FSR and closer to DLSS. And it does work wonders. It isn't available or as widely available as FSR and DLSS. So there are those games and there are going to be those situations where, yes, you can turn on these particular features, but you don't have the necessary feature to offset the performance impact of turning on ray tracing, which does kind of suck. And it's a situation that you don't necessarily have to deal with when it comes to AMD or Nvidia graphics cards, because most games at the very least support some version of FSR and yeah, and, and DLSS, of course. Are you willing to live with all the other concessions that I spoke to you about? That's up to you. But there's one last thing I want to talk to you about, and that is just the software. And it's not so much of a complaint, but just an observation. Well, maybe slightly a complaint and a compliment as well. So the Arc Control System allows you, or rather Control Center, not System, allows you overclocking GPU only. You can adjust uh, board power and you can obviously uh, save that profile as well. So it boots with Windows and sets the profile with Windows and so forth. You can set target temperatures and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. But there's one thing you cannot do, which is overclock the VRAM. But there's one thing that I lament about the Arc Control Center. You literally cannot use it to change resolution of your monitor or change uh, scan rate to change anything like that. You actually need to download a separate piece of software from Intel or rather from the Microsoft Store to be able to do that. Why do I need to have two softwares running in parallel and one is just serving to just change resolution, scan rate and so forth? I, I think that's redundant. So all of that functionality should be inherent in the Arc Control Center. There's no reason for it not to be part of that. If you want something in addition to that, I can understand going to the Windows Store, but it shouldn't be a prerequisite, right? Am I, that's, that's reasonable, right? So anyway, with that said, the one other thing as well that came as a good thing is the on-screen display. I appreciate what Intel has done here. can tell you all sorts of things that you want on an on-screen display, and that's really good. But you know, the most important thing that you want for an on-screen display is what? Your frame rate. That's what you want, and that's the one thing Intel doesn't give you. So they have all this other information that is good to have, but they don't give you a simple frame rate counter. Like, why... I can't tell you, maybe for the lols, I don't know. But anyway, the cool thing about all of this stuff is that this is software things and they can be fixed in future. But with that said, this is my experience with the Arc A750 limited edition GPU. I know it's not the typical review and the things that I tell you about the GPU, but I think it's important to know all of this because you are dealing with something new for most people. At least it was new to me. You are dealing with an entirely new GPU vendor. And these are the things that you need to be aware of. But overall, what am I thinking? Again, it's hard to beat this price. The experience that I had, negatives and positives, and then you balance that against the price. This is a winner for me. You know, if you're buying an entry level gaming machine and a proper entry level one, not one with a 1650 or something useless like that, like an actual GPU that can play games and enable ray tracing and so forth, you're not going to beat the A750. And in light of that and the price, I think Intel has done a fantastic job here. Let me know what you guys think of this GPU in the comments below. Are you using one? Are you considering one? Are you buying one? What have you? Just let me know what you think of this GPU and stay tuned for the benchmarks. And until the next time, take care and peace.